It is so great to see you this morning. If you have your Bible with you, I invite you to join me in the book of 2 Chronicles. A book back there in the Old Testament. I, I doubt if many of you have a Bible that just kind of automatically falls open to 2 Chronicles. But I um, invite you to, to join me there. I read a story one time about a, a little boy that was sitting in church. Actually, he wasn't so much sitting, he was squirming. He, he just had ants in his pants. You know, you can remember probably being there if you were a, in church as a, a child where, where everything in you just, just needed to move and wiggle around. And, and he had the wiggles. He couldn't be still. He couldn't be quiet. His parents were trying desperately to, to, to get him to sit down and, and be quiet. And, and they had, had shushed him and, and, and set him back in his place. And they gave him, you know, the stern look. And, and they gave him the threat, don't make me take you out of here. I will take you out of here. And, and finally, after a while, dad just reached his breaking point and he snatched up Junior, picked him up and proceeded the stern walk toward the back door, determined to get to the bottom of the problem, if you know what I'm talking about. And as they reached the back of the door, the little boy turned around and shouted to the congregation, pray for me, pray for me. <laughs> You know, that, that, that might be, if we're really honest about it, kind of our approach to prayer. I mean, when life is just whipping us down and we feel like we're facing difficult times, maybe then the, the crisis really, really drives us to, to prayer. And, and to be clear, we should pray during those times of difficulty and, and crisis. But outside of those emergency times, does prayer really ever cross the radar of our heart and mind. There's a lady by the name of Corey Ten Boom. Some of you have heard her name. Some of you may be unfamiliar with her. Uh, she's been in heaven for a number of years now, but Corey and her family were Christians back in the days of World War II. They, they helped many Jews escape capture by the Nazis during the Holocaust. And Corey is quoted as having asked this question. She said this, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? Is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? It's a good question. Because it goes, think about it now. Every day that you get in the car, if, if you drive a vehicle, every time you get in it, you, you use the steering wheel, don't you? It's so automatic that, that you really don't even have to, to think about it. It's, it's just a consistent part of, of every drive. Uh, your spare tire, on the other hand, is a different story altogether, though. I mean, if, if you're using it, something has gone wrong. And, and if nothing's gone wrong, you probably never even give it a thought. In fact, if, if you have a vehicle, uh, let's have a little test. Do you know for sure you have a spare tire? If you have a spare tire, where is it? Do you know how to get to it? I mean, you might say, well, yeah, they say it's under the vehicle. How would you get it loose if you needed to? Do you know for sure that there's air in the spare tire? I mean, unless something goes wrong that, that drives us to have to, to use it, we probably never really give it a second thought, do we? It's so, so, so easy for prayer to be much the same. Rather than it being a part of just kind of the, the normal rhythm of our everyday life, it's something that might not really cross our mind until we find ourselves in a bind. In fact... If we had some way to, to really measure it and know, I suspect that, that when it comes to, to the Christian life, or for those of you who, who are Christians, well, when it comes to the Christian life, prayer is probably one of the most talked about things, and yet at the same time, one of the most neglected things. There's a great evangelist from days gone by named D.L. Moody. Neil Moody said, every great movement of God can be traced to some kneeling figure. Every great movement of God, he said, can, can be traced to, to somebody pouring their heart out in prayer. 
It's often been said that no great work of God will ever be accomplished apart from prayer. And why would it? Why would it? I mean, you should be profoundly thankful that I'm not God. And I assure you, I'm very grateful and thankful that, that you're not God. Okay, but, but let's just pretend we could do the impossible and somehow step into God's shoes. Why would we pour out our power if people weren't consistently seeking that power? Because even as 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 pitifully small and limited as, as our understanding is, we can even understand that, that if we were in the, the shoes of, of God and, and we just consistently poured out our, our power on people who really weren't seeking that power, what would eventually happen? People would begin to take the notion that, that what happened was of their own doings. It would feel like it was, it was their, their own ability, their own strength, their own ingenuity or, or whatever. I mean, if, if heavenly power was unleashed when it wasn't being sought, then people wouldn't understand their need of us if we were God. Well, doesn't that just make sense? Why would we see the, the full unleashing of, of heaven's blessings if, if we're not seeking it? I'm thankful that God is faithful. Listen, even when you and I are not faithful, God is still faithful. And I'm so very thankful for that. I'm thankful that time after time after time, he extends his grace and his blessing, even if we have failed to pursue him as we should. But I suspect, I suspect there are probably a lot of times that if we somehow could, could pull back the curtain that, that, that would allow us to see into to, to heaven's reality, I suspect we would probably recognize the fact that there are a lot of times that we kind of just sort of taste the tip of his grace and fail to realize that there is a smorgasbord available that we fail to, to experience because we don't, we don't dig in through consistent, disciplined, faithful prayer. And this topic of prayer, it's, it's where we left off last week, if you were if you were with us. When we were together last time, we looked at an episode from, from the life and the experience of, of Moses. And, and here's what we saw. There was this time where, where this great leader Moses was to lead God's people to, to a land that he had promised to give them. He was leading them to the promised land. And, and there was a point where the people had acted just ridiculously, carelessly, foolishly, sinfully, and God told Moses, take these people and go. Go to the promised land, but I'm not going with you. And do you remember if you were here what Moses' response was? His response was, God, if you're not going, please don't send us. If you're not going, don't send us. We won't leave here without you because more than the promised land, we need the, the promise giver. We need you, not just your blessing. We need your presence. And, and Moses begged God to, to show him a glimpse of, of, of his glory, and it was this powerful, awesome thing. Well, we talked as we looked at that about how, how we sort of stand at the threshold of a, a new day. I mean, literally, in a way that, that has never been experienced in, in our lifetime. We stand at the threshold of a, a new day, and, and we talked about how, how it's important for us to recognize that, that what we need is, is not simply a return to our routine. What we need is the presence of God for His power to, to be shown, for, for his glory to, to be put on display, for, for his purpose to be fulfilled. We don't just need God's blessing. We need God. And, and, and kind of like Moses who was saying, even more than the promised land, we need to be where you are, Lord. Well, we likewise, we need to be seeking him. We need to be where he is, so to speak. And it's, it's not the 
only way for that to happen. It's not the, the only thing that, that contributes to it, but, but one of the fundamental ways that, that, that we can, can be aligned with God, one of the, the, the fundamental ways that, that we can say, God, we need your presence and your power and your purpose and, and your glory to be shown. One of the ways that that happens is by being a people of prayer. Being people of prayer. I want you to listen to, to the words of a, just a verse or two of Scripture. They're words that were originally given to a, a king, a king and, and, and all of his people. And, and like Moses recognized the need of, of God's presence, this king was, was given some encouragement about seeking God's presence. And not only the, the king was given this encouragement, but, but all of the people were, were given this encouragement. Listen, in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, and this is the first couple of verses of that chapter. 2 Chronicles 15, verse 1 says, The Spirit of God came on Azariah, son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa. Now that's not Asa as in governor, all right? I haven't asked the governor, but he might have been named after this Asa, okay? This Asa was not governor, but king. And he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Listen to me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, all you people. The Lord is with you when you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. The Lord is with you, he said, when you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. If you forsake him, that is turn away from him, he'll do likewise. I read a statement recently, and it was kind of sobering and convicting. The statement was this. You are as close to God as you have chosen to be. You are as close to God as you have chosen to be. It's a statement that, that certainly finds some validation in Scripture. I mean, right here in 2 Chronicles, we, we hear that if you seek God, you'll find him. We could turn over to the, the New Testament, the book of James chapter 4, and, and we could read that if we draw near to God, then, then he'll be near to us. And time and time again in Scripture, we could point to, to the same principle, the, the same encouragement and urging to, to follow after God, to, to seek God, that, that he will be found as, as you seek him. You see, here's, here's the truth. God is unchanging. The Bible says that he's the same yesterday and, and today and forever. Now that doesn't mean that he's static, that he's mundane, that, that he's boring. Not at all. You know, when we think of something being the same day after day after day and it never, ever changes. If you had to eat the same thing every single day, if you had to do the same thing every single day, we tend to hear that, think about that and go, man, that's the pits. Well, that's not what it means when it says that God is, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Not that he's mundane and boring. It means that he is faithful. He is consistent. He is unwavering, unchanging. He's not this, this moving target that, that maybe today he thinks this is right and this is wrong, but whoop, psych, he throws us a curveball, and then it changes. No, he's consistent. He's, he's perfect and solid. He's, he's the, the same. He's not playing some kind of cosmic game of hide and seek. He invites us to, to know him and to follow him. And again, it's not the only way we do that, but a foundational way we do that is through prayer. We must, we must, we must be a people, a church of prayer. And I want to remind you or inform you if you weren't with us last week, that, that one of the ways that we're asking you to do that is, is to, to kind of join a, a prayer force, so to speak, a, a prayer team. 
in the atrium. When you came in, you saw that big old eight-foot wall. It's a prayer wall. And it's like a, a one-month calendar. And, and let me explain to you again what, what we're asking you to do. We're asking you, would you take a day each month and sign in on, on a day of that calendar? You're saying, that's my day of each month. You can put January, February, March, April, any month up there. And that's the day that, that, that I'm committing to, to set aside a few minutes and, and specifically devote some time and energy to prayer. Now, hopefully it's not the only day of the month that you'll pray, okay? It's, it's not that we're saying that, that's, that's your day, you, you pray this month. No, we're not setting aside a, a day of the month and say, okay, you get to eat on this day. Not, not another day of the week and not another day of the month. No, you're pretty much going to eat every day, right? Well, we're not saying this is your day to pray. Hopefully you pray more than that. But, but you're pledging, committing that on that day, on that day you're going to, be intentional to devote some time and some energy to, to pray. And we're not telling you you got to set aside the, the entire day. It might be that, that you devote just a few minutes. It might be that, that you devote a, a couple of periods of time during that day. But, but you're pledging to, to, to pray, to be a prayer warrior on that day, to pray for one another. You know, one of the things that it's so easy in a, a church where, where you, you really don't have the opportunity to know everybody. It becomes very easy to, to just kind of set aside the idea of praying for one another. I mean, if we really put together a, a prayer list of every single prayer request, do you know what you'd do? You'd look at this page and, whew, that's long. And you'd set it aside, and that'd be the end of that. Well, through this... We'll share a few of those prayer requests with you. And, and you'll be able on, on that day to, to specifically spend a few minutes lifting up some other people in your church family. You'll be able to, to spend a few minutes praying for, for our community, for our country. I mean, all you got to do is, is flip on the news to see how just insanely desperate our country is for the hand of God to, to work, right? And yet, if, if we look at that, we can kind of look at that and go, my gosh, what in the world could, could happen? I mean, just go to every corner of, of our country and it's like there's insanity at, at every turn. And, it, and it's true. And if we look at that, it's like, man, it's overwhelming. How could that ever be changed? Well, I don't mean to be overly simplistic, but do you know how that could be changed? It's not for the country to be changed, but for communities to be changed. It really even starts smaller than that for people to be changed. And as people are changed and churches are changed and communities are changed and states are changed, then a country can be changed. And again, I know that sounds simplistic. But what we can do is what we can do, and what we can do is have an impact where, where God has put us, in, and so we want to pray earnestly for, for our community and for God to, to use us to be salt and light. We want to pray specifically for the salvation of those who are lost. Do you understand? Does, does it concern you that there are people all around us that if life were snuffed out, they will go to hell? I mean, that's not just something for a psycho preacher to stand up and scream about every, every now and then. That's the truth of God's Word, that heaven is real, that hell is real, that eternity is long, and people are going to spend it somewhere, either heaven or hell. Are we bothered by the fact that there are people that don't have Jesus? We ought to be bothered by that enough that we would pray and say, Holy God, creator of everything, would you unleash your power, and those who are doomed without you, would you rescue them? Can we be a people praying for the salvation of, of those who, who don't know Christ? We want to pray for God's presence and, and his power to be shown among us. If no great work of God will be done apart from prayer, then how careless would we be? How arrogant would we be? How foolish would we be to fail to pray? And so I'm asking you. Would you join us in, in that of, of taking a, a day a month and, 
And wherever you are, devote a little bit of time on that day to pray. My hope is, my prayer is that, that on that, that board out there, that there would be hundreds of names on that board showing hundreds and hundreds of, of people who have determined to make sure that heaven's halls echo with the prayers of God's people in this place. And if you're not here with us physically, if, if you're here with us online, email us. Drop us a note if you're not able to be here. You can pray from, from wherever you are. Drop us a note and, and tell us, this day, sign me up for this day. You can let a pastor online know right now, hey, put me on this. Or you can, you can email. Natalie Hogan is the one kind of helping uh, coordinate that. Natalie at AntiochConway.com. Drop her a note, and she'll put your name on there and, and enlist you on that, that team of prayer warriors. That that. That passage that we read that urged the people, the Lord is with you when, when you're with him, and urged them to seek God. Going down a little bit later in that chapter, and, and listen to what it says. It says, they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and their soul. So, so they set up this eight-foot prayer wall, and they broke it down in, into days, and they said, we're, we're going to sign up on that that big old wall, and, and we're going to seek God, right? I mean, it doesn't specifically say that, but I suspect that's what they did. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and their soul. And listen to this next verse. I love it. And all who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, were to be put to death, whether small or great, man or woman. So that's, that's the next part of our prayer wall. If we don't find your name on it, That might be a little extreme, okay? We won't do that. But listen, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, it tells us this. Devote yourselves to prayer. Being watchful and thankful. Devote yourselves to prayer. Listen, devotion, that, that doesn't speak of, of just kind of a, a casual, ah, maybe, maybe not. No. Devotion, I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's a heavier thing. That's, that's, a, that's a deeper commitment. That's, that's a thing that, that you are, are pledging yourself to, giving yourself to, committing yourself to, surrendering yourself to. Devote yourself to prayer. If the Bible says something, it's important. But if the Bible says something repeatedly, then we really know that, that, that we need to set up, sit up and take notice. Well, if the Bible says something over and over and over and over and over again, it would just be absolutely foolish to, to not give it attention. Well, did you know that on the pages of Scripture, we find prayer hundreds of times? Hundreds of of times. We find examples of prayer. We find instructions about prayer. We find commandments to pray. We cannot in any way say that, well, this is a gray area where we really aren't sure if this is a, a priority. No, we know we are called to be people of prayer. But now let's keep it real for just a minute. If I asked us, how many of us agree we should be people of prayer? And I asked for a show of hands, probably it would be an overwhelming majority. I mean, maybe even in a gathering like this, we could get unanimous consensus. Yes, we ought to be people of prayer. But then if we then turned it around and talked about, okay, how are we doing with that? Mm, that might be a different story, right? So why don't we? Why don't we pray with consistency? A lot of possibilities there, a lot of things we could talk about. Uh, one, at, at, at just a crazy basic level, it might be kind of a thing of carelessness. I mean, it's, it's not that we make some kind of conscious decision of, I am not going to pray. Hm, I refuse. Now, there may be those times where we feel like God hadn't done what we want him to do and we're just kind of upset with God and, 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 and maybe we kind of sulk up. But more often, it, it's not a thing that, that we've made a decision, I, I am not going to pray. I know a lot of times it's, it's just kind of a, a thing of carelessness. We just kind of jump into the activity of our day and, and, and we just fail to give it any attention. 
years ago, there was a skydiving instructor by the name of Ivan Lester McGuire. And you could make the case that Ivan died of carelessness. A skydiving instructor hundreds and hundreds of times had, had successfully jumped out of airplanes. On this one particular day, Ivan's job was to, to film another student and their instructor. You know, the thing where, where they were harnessed together and this instructor and the student is going to dive out and, and Ivan's going to be the one flying along beside of him with the camera on his helmet that, that's videoing this. And, and, and so Ivan got ready and made the dive out of his airplane, something he had done hundreds of times before. But this time, he forgot to put on his parachute. I mean, literally forgot the most basic thing and, and fell to his death. You know, when, when we jump into life without prayer, it's kind of like we've left an essential piece of equipment on the plane. But sometimes it's easy to just kind of be careless when it comes to something like that. Maybe another reason that, that we don't is that maybe we're not sure how. I mean, honestly, for, for, for some, even some who, who have been Christians for a long time, maybe you kind of feel like, well, I don't really know how to pray. Is there a right or a wrong way to do it? And, and if that's you, don't, don't feel bad for, for having that kind of question in your mind. Jesus' own disciples asked him, teach us to pray. Do you have to be able to speak the, the right sound in language? Do you have to be able to, to use biblical sound in words? You know, what, what do I say? How do I do it? And I don't mean to, to make this sound overly simplistic, but, but basically prayer is just talking to God. I assure you he's not impressed if you know how to insert multisyllable words into the right places. He's impressed with a genuine heart that opens up to him and just talks to him sincerely. There's a lot, of, a lot of reasons we could talk about maybe as to why we don't get around to praying. But, but if you're thinking, okay, I'll admit it, I'll buy it, I, I, I need to be more disciplined when it comes to, to praying. But I'm still not sure how to make it happen. I mean, keep it, keep it crazy practical, Jason. How, how could I take that first step? Well, let me give you some just ridiculously practical kind of thoughts here. Again, there are a hundred things that, that we could talk about, and for, for a few of you, this is just crazy elementary. But for the rest of us, maybe something like this would offer a little bit of help. Number one, here's a first step. Set an appointment with God. Try it. Set an appointment with God. Here's the awesome thing. He is the most powerful being in the history of all history, and yet his calendar is incredibly flexible. He has offered you and offered me a standing invitation to meet with him. So set an appointment and, and do that. Now, in, in the Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 tells us to pray continually. That doesn't mean that, that, that we're to walk around with our head bowed and our eyes closed, chanting some kind of strange things, running into stuff. That's not what it means. It's talking about learning to live in an attitude of prayer, staying, staying tuned in to the line of communication with the Lord. And we should definitely strive for that. We should definitely do that. But right now, I'm talking about setting aside a few minutes that are going to be intentionally given to prayer. We don't have to look hard at all to find times in Scripture that even Jesus himself did that. And so if he needed it, we certainly need it. So set an appointment. Set an appointment where you say, for these minutes, I'm going to set it aside and spend some time talking to God. I'm going to set an appointment for prayer. If you and I were to set up an appointment to get together and talk, what would we do? And if we... If we set an appointment to do that, then, then at the designated time, we'd get together. Maybe, maybe you'd stop by the, the office here, and, and we'd pull up a chair, and we'd sit down, and we'd close the door. We'd silence the phone. And for that little window of time, we'd just spend some time together talking. 
Now, have you, have you ever had good intentions of getting with somebody? Maybe you ran into a, an old friend. It's been, whoa, man, it's been too long since we got together. We need to get together. We should get lunch sometime. Let's get up and get, yeah, we'll do that. I'll holler at you. And then weeks go by, months go by, maybe years go by, and it never happened. Or, or there's somebody else that, that, that we have the best intentions of, of getting together with them, and, and it never happens. Why? Most of the time, probably because we never got specific and intentional about here's when. We're going to do that. We're going to make it happen, and, and here's when. Well, I think there's probably a lot of similarity to, to prayer. It's not that, that we determine to not pray. It's, it's just that maybe we don't get specific and intentional about, okay, I'm going to set aside this time, and I'm going to be specific about prayer. Sometimes it might be challenging to do that because, honestly, you might not feel like it. But like a lot of things, if you wait till you feel like it, you might not ever do it. And so, so don't wait to pray until you feel like it. No, keep on praying until you feel like it. Because it, it might be that complacency is a weapon that the enemy will use to lull us away from something like prayer. I don't really feel like it, therefore I, I, I don't do it. But, but, but like many things, if, if we wait till we feel like it, it just never happens. But the more you discipline yourself to do it, the more you just might feel like it. So... Set an appointment. Set aside a, a few minutes. I'm going to talk to God here. And then if you need just kind of a framework, kind of a help so that you don't kind of run through your list of, okay, God, I want this, I want that, I want something else. Here, do this, do that, do, do something else. And then, you know, in 10 seconds we've, we've pretty well got it all said. If, if, if you need kind of a, a framework to help guide you in in your prayer time, then, then here's something that, again, is just review for some of you, but, but, but for some of the rest to be helpful or, or be a reminder. Sometimes we use the, the, the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S. That sounds real biblical. That's a book of the Bible, right? A-C-T-S. It stands for Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and, and Supplication. So there's something you can use. But I, I would encourage you, uh, let's maybe even alter that a little bit and, and, and pray this. Pray CATS. CATS. Right? C-A-T-S. Some of you heard the story before about the, the preacher that um, had a cat, and his cat got up in a tree, and he was trying to get the cat out of the tree, couldn't get the cat out of the tree, and finally he realized it's just a little sapling kind of tree. So he took a big old rope and, and, and tied it onto the bumper of his car and tied it onto the tree, and he figured, I can bend that tree down and get this cat out. And he pulled that tree down and pulled it down and he could almost reach that cat and he knew just you know pull it a little bit more and I'll be able to get the cat out so he pulled a little bit farther and, and his rope pa snapped and just catapulted that cat I shot it off into the wild blue yonder he felt terrible he's searching all over the place looking for his cat never could find his cat a couple days later he was in the grocery store Ran into a, a lady who was also a member of his church and everybody who knew this lady very well knew that she just despised cats but he couldn't help but notice in her buggy, she had a big old bag of cat food. And he's like, you and cat food, what in the world? She's like, preacher, let me tell you, craziest thing. You would not believe, my daughter, my daughter has been begging for a cat. Just would not leave me alone about a cat. Can we please have a cat, please have a cat. Told her we are not getting a cat. One day she's begging me, can we have this cat? And finally I told her, if God opens heaven and drops a cat out of the sky. You can have a cat. Until then, don't bother me. She said, preacher, I'm telling you, I watched my little girl go out in the front yard, fall down to her knees and plead, oh, God, give me a cat. And at that moment, I'm telling you, out of a clear blue sky, here came a cat, all four spread out, <laughs> fell right in front of her. Pray cats. Now, don't pray for cats. Lord forbid. Why would you do that? All right. But C-A-T-S, cats. C confess. Say that with me. Confess. Oh, it's hard to even say that word, isn't it? Mm, we don't like that. Confession does not come easy. Confession. Is there a sin that needs to be confessed? Start there. Start there. If, if you don't see anything in your life that needs to be made right, you're like, I got nothing to confess. Well, you might need to look closer. In fact, you might need to 
to pray like David did in, in the Psalms. When in Psalm 39, he, he said, search my heart, O God. Search my heart. And he, he, he invited God, show me if there's any inconsistency, if, if there's any offensive way, then, then show me. He'll begin with, with confession. Here's why I suggest that first. Because unconfessed sin closes the ear of God. Uh, listen to what Psalm 66 says. It says that if I cherish sin in my heart, then God won't listen. If I'm intentionally harboring this sin, but then expecting that, that God's really going to be tuned into my prayer, I'm, I'm just deceiving myself. Isaiah 59 says, your sins have hidden God's face from you so that he will not hear. And time after time, Scripture tells us that God isn't impressed with a religious routine. He's impressed with a heart that is humbled before him. And, and so if we just come to him out of ritual, out of formality, out of whatever, but we're harboring sin, then it's like we've, we've closed the door to that communication with God. Listen, confession does not inform God. You're not going to confess something and have God go, you're kidding. What? Really? He knows. Confession is more about your acknowledgement that I need to turn from this. I need to turn to God. So begin with C, confess. A, adore. Say that with me. Adore. Adore. Adoration. It's simply taking time to, to praise God. Read through the book of Psalms sometime, and, and you'll find that time after time after time, the writer is just praising God for, for his wonders and his greatness and, and who he is. Take time to, to just acknowledge God's greatness. Just go through and, and tell him some of the things that, that are great about him. We, we've done this before. You can take the alphabet and, and go through A, B, C, D, and, and just assign a, a word that starts with, with each letter. God, you are awesome. God, you are big, to say the least. You are the creator of all. And just, just go through the alphabet. Be ready when you get to X. That'll challenge you, okay? But just take some time to adore him. When we do that, you're not trying to, to flatter God, not trying to butter him up so that you can get something from him. Have you ever had a, an experience where somebody did something nice for you or they said something kind to you and you knew there was a catch? Can you believe the two kids that have grown up in my home that there have been times that they did something nice or said something nice, not because they were so much being nice, but because there was an ulterior motive? Shocking. I know none of you would be so manipulative as that. We're not trying to, to just flatter God so that we can talk him into doing something. Uh, no, we're, we're just taking some time to acknowledge to him and remind ourselves, God, you are all that. Confess. Adore. T, thank. Say that with me. Thank. Thanksgiving. It doesn't have to just be reserved to, to a Thursday in November. Remember his provision and acknowledge what it is, a blessing from him. Thank him for that. S, supplication. Say that with me. So, yeah, that's just a fancy way of saying supply. We'll just say it that way. Supply. We're, we're asking him to supply these needs. These are our requests that, that we're, we're bringing our requests to him. God instructs us to bring our request to him, but don't allow prayer to be reduced to, to nothing more than that. So cats, C-A-T-S, confession, confess what, what needs to be confessed. Adoration, adore him, praise him. T, thanksgiving, thank him for his blessings. S, supply, ask for his supply or bring your supplication, your, your request to him. As we from this point, from, from this point, this place, this, this dawn of a new day, we kind of make our way into to this new normal. I'm urging you, urging you, urging you, let's be people of prayer. In fact, Christian, listen, persistence in prayer is not something that 
we're just to occasionally give some thought to. Persistence in prayer is not indication that somehow we're a spiritual giant. Listen, persistence in prayer is simply obedience. It's not something that Scripture says you ought to consider this. It's something that time after time after time we're instructed to do. A preacher and teacher and theologian from a century ago by the name of F.B. Meyer, he said the greatest tragedy is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. Let's not be guilty of leaving a treasure trove of unoffered prayer so that within we leave a treasure trove of blessings that we failed to receive. If you've never accepted Christ, maybe you're hearing all this and thinking, dude, I don't, I don't know about all that. I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure about this whole Christianity thing. I'm, I just got drug up in here today, and I'm just kind of you know, here, or I'm just checking it out or whatever. I, I, I don't even know. Uh, listen, there is a God who loves you. There is a Savior named Jesus who died for you. You didn't ask him to do that, but you needed him to do that. Because you see, you and I, we have this in common. We were guilty of sin. In fact, long before we even were born, God knew we would be guilty of sin, and he had sent Jesus to die for us. And at the cross... Jesus took the punishment that I should have taken on myself forever. I should have spent eternity separated from God, just receiving the, the wrath, the punishment, the consequences for my sin. That's what you and I deserve. But when Jesus went to the cross for us, he paid that price for us. And now he offers this gift of salvation. It's free to you. He's paid the price. But like any gift, it has to be received. Someone could offer you an extraordinary gift, but if you just nod and walk away from it, it's done you no good. It has to be received. Same with the gift of salvation. It has to be received. And you can receive that by starting out with a, a prayer, something like this, where you simply tell God, I admit I need you. I confess I am a sinner. There's no denying that. I don't understand it, but I believe it. You've paid for my sin, and I need you. I surrender myself to you, and I ask you to save me. If you've never accepted Christ, a prayer something like that is what you need to start with. It doesn't have to be those words. There's nothing magical about those words. It's the heart behind it that simply acknowledges you need what only God can provide. Hey, what's your prayer need today? Probably in, in a room with this many of us gathered up, there's a lot of things going on that, that maybe is on somebody's heart that, that you need to, to pray about today. And, and I want to invite you to just take a few minutes this morning and, and give it to him. Maybe Maybe you need to follow Christ in some decision that he's put on your heart. Maybe you're one of those that, that even in the midst of these crazy days, you've accepted Christ. Maybe you've been saved recently and, and would like to, to let people know that. Maybe, maybe you know that your next step is, is following the Lord in baptism, and, and maybe you want to let people know, I've been saved and, and I want to be baptized. Would you be willing to, to come share that with me and, and, and let's share that with other folks? Maybe... Maybe God's made it clear to you that, that this is, is where you're to, to find your church home, that, that you need to, to quit drifting and, and find that, that place to have a church family. And, and maybe you want to make it known that, that God's brought you here to, to find your church home. Maybe you need to talk with someone about that thing of salvation. Maybe there's something else altogether different, whatever it is. For a few minutes this morning, we're going to take just a, a little bit of time and, and invite you to just lay it at his feet. Maybe, maybe you want to use this time as, as we do stand here at, at, at this new day to, to, to just begin praying right now, God, show us your power, your purpose, your glory. It's been a while because of all the craziness since we've just had this altar open to invite you, hey, if you'd like to just come and pray, just
come and pray. But this morning, we're going to do that. If I can help you, I'll be, I'll be here. But, but if you want to just take a minute and just kneel at the Savior's feet and lay your prayer before him, I invite you to use this time to do that. Hey, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for inviting us into your presence. Thank you that, that prayer is not just some ritual, some formality, some whatever that, that we kind of have to look at from a distance. Prayer is simply talking to you and being still before you and, and you invite us into your presence and I thank you for that. And Lord, I, I don't know the condition of, of every heart in this place. I know in this room there are some that they don't know you and, and that's the prayer they need to start with. I know that in this room there may be those that have recently trusted you and and need to courageously make that known. I, I know that in this room there are some that, that maybe there's a, a multitude of other things that they're carrying with them that you invite them. Uh, lay that down here at, at my feet. Let me, let me help you with that. Maybe in this room there's, there's just hearts of praise that, that we just need to, to bow before you and, and just adore you for who you are. Lord, as we take a few minutes... We just come into your presence. We lift up our prayers to you. In Jesus' name.